Hello everyone! In this control engineering and control theory tutorial, we explain how to sketch a Bode diagram, also known as a Bode plot of a first order transfer function without zeros. We provide a detailed and step by step procedure for sketching Bode diagrams. We explain how to approximate the Bode diagram by using the asymptotic approximation, which is very useful for approximation of Bode diagrams of more complex transfer functions. We also explain what is a break frequency that is very important concept for understanding Bode diagrams and frequency response of dynamical systems. In our future tutorials, we explain how to sketch Bode plots of more complex transfer functions. However, in order to be able to sketch Bode plots of more complex transfer functions, you actually need to know very well how to sketch a Bode plot of a simple first order transfer function. Consequently, this tutorial is very important for understanding more complex cases. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 450 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot! We explain the sketching procedure by considering a concrete example. Our transfer function has this form, W of S is equal to 10 over s plus 0 0.5. In this equation, s is the Laplace complex variable. The first step is to transform this transfer function into this form, where k and t in this equation are coefficients that need to be determined. So what we have to do over here, instead of 0 0.5, we have to write 1. So let's do that. W of s can be written like this. Since in the denominator here, I need to have 1, I will take 0 0.5 out, and inside I will have what do we have over here? We have 1 over 0 0.5, and that's actually 2, s plus 1. And over here, in the numerator, I have 10. Now, 10 over 0 0.5 is actually 20. So in the numerator, I have 20 over 2s plus 1. This form of the transfer function is very important for understanding the Bode plots. The importance of this form will become clear by the end of this video tutorial. The next step is to compute the so-called sinusoidal transfer function. We do that by substituting s by j omega, where j is the imaginary unit, that is, j squared is equal to minus 1 and omega is the angular frequency. Okay, so once we substitute as by j omega, we obtain this expression. w of j omega is actually 20 over... Now, over here I have j 2 omega plus 1. This transfer function is the so-called sinusoidal transfer function. The sinusoidal transfer function is actually a complex number. The next step is to write this transfer function in a polar form. So how to do that? Well, we need to express this complex number in the denominator of the transfer function in the polar form. Let's do that. Okay, w of j omega is, in the numerator, I have 20, multiplying e to the power 0j. This is the polar form of the real constant. This is the argument of the complex number, or the phase, in the case of dynamical system, and it's equal to 0. What happens in the denominator? This is a complex number, and I need to compute the modulus of this complex number. 
the modulus is square root of real part plus in real part squared plus imaginary part squared. The real part squared is 1 and the imaginary part squared is 4 omega squared. Then multiplying the argument of the complex number and over here the argument is actually the angle. It's the arctan or the inverse tangent function of the imaginary over real. The imaginary is actually 2 omega and the real is 1. And here it is. Now we can immediately see the modulus of this complete complex number. The modulus is actually 20 over square root of, let's write it down nicely, 1 plus 4 omega squared. And the argument of this complex number, since we have 0 over here and we have j arc tan 2 omega over 1, it's simply minus j arc tan or the inverse tan function of 2 omega. And here it is. Here is the polar form of our sinusoidal transfer function. In the most general form, the transfer function can be written like this. Where this number m of omega is the magnitude, in our case, the magnitude is given over here, and it's also written here. And multiplying e to the power j phi, where phi is the phase, and in our case, the phase is minus arc tan to omega. The function m is called the magnitude response. The function phi is called the phase response. The frequency response of a linear dynamical system consists of the magnitude and phase responses. In order to sketch body plots, we need to define the concept of the log magnitude function. The log magnitude function is actually defined like this. We take our magnitude and we compute 20 logarithm with the base of 10 of m. And by substituting our expression for m, that is by substituting this term in this equation, we obtain the log magnitude function. The body plot consists of the two plots. The first plot, or the top plot, shows the log magnitude function. And the second plot, the bottom plot, shows the phase function. And on the horizontal axis, we plot the angular frequency in the logarithmic scale. Next, let's expand the log magnitude function. The log magnitude function can be written like this. Over here, we use basic rules from calculus. From here, we can see that our log magnitude function can be represented as the sum of these two terms. L1 term, given over here, and if you compute this logarithm, we obtain 26.02, and the second term, given over here. Okay, so to sketch the body plot, we first need to sketch this function. And here's how this function looks like. On the horizontal axis, we put logarithm of frequency. On the vertical axis, we put the magnitude function. And over here, we just have a constant magnitude that doesn't depend on the frequency. And here it is. Perfect. Completely independent of frequency. Next, we need to sketch the log magnitude plot of L2. The expression for L2 is given over here. To sketch this plot, we need to use asymptotic approximation. Let us first consider the general form of the first order transfer function. Here it is. This term is actually the general form of the expression that participates in our original transfer function. That is, this is the general form of this term, where in our case, t is equal to 2. The log magnitude function of this transfer function is given over here. Now, when omega t is much smaller than 1, we can see from this expression that minus 20 logarithm 
10, the square root of 1 becomes approximately equal to 0. And this is only under the condition that omega t is much smaller than 1. Okay, so we obtain one asymptote. When omega approaches to 0, we have a horizontal straight line, and this horizontal straight line is just 0, always 0. On the other hand, when omega t is much larger than 1, we can see that this second term dominates the first term, and we simply obtain this expression, minus 20 logarithm with the base 10 omega t. This is very important. In the logarithmic scale, that is on the Bode plot, this is a line with a slope of minus 20 decibels per 10 times increase of the frequency omega. This slope is actually called a minus 20 dB per decade. A decade means a 10 times increase in the frequency. So what happens over here when the frequency increases 10 times, we will go down for minus 20 dB. You will see this later on on the body plot. Now, we need to define the concept of the break frequency or corner frequency. The frequency omega for which omega t is equal to 1 or omega is equal to 1 over t is called the break frequency or corner frequency. The point determined by this frequency is called the break point. Again, by looking at the general form of the transfer function given by this expression, the corner frequency for this transfer function is omega is equal to 1 over t. And now, if you remember the beginning of this video tutorial, let's go at the beginning, we expressed our original transfer function in this form. The idea over here is to make the term that's not equal to 1 to be equal to 1 and to leave here the term t. And from this expression, we can immediately see the corner frequency. The corner frequency is very important since it enables us to asymptotically approximate our transfer function, as we can see it over here. When omega or omega t is much smaller than 1, we have zero approximation, that is a horizontal straight line. On the other hand, when omega t is much larger than 1, we have this approximation, that is a straight line, slanted straight line approximation. The, core, the, the limit between these two asymptotic approximations is actually our break frequency. So one asymptote breaks into another asymptote at the corner frequency. This is very important to understand. Now that we understand what are the asymptotes and what is the break frequency, let's go back to the problem of sketching the log magnitude plot of L2. In our case, the break frequency is at omega is equal to 1 over 2, and that's 0 0.5. How did I find this? Well, here's the general term. This is t, t is equal to 2, and the break frequency is simply omega is 1 over t, and that's 1 over 2, that is, that's equal to 0 0.5. The asymptotic approximation of L2 is shown over here. Here's our break frequency at 0 0.5 omega. For omega values much smaller than break frequency, we have this asymptotic approximation of our L2. At the break frequency, this horizontal asymptote breaks into the slanted asymptote shown over here that has a slope of minus 20 dB per decade. This is the asymptotic approximation of L2. In reality, our L2 will look like this. And after here, the graph of L2 will approach the asymptote. If we substitute the break frequency in the expression for L2, we will obtain this value, minus 3.01. This means 
that we are actually making the maximum error when approximating L2 by its asymptote of minus 3.01 dB. And here it is. Minus 3.01 dB. The log magnitude function of the complete transfer function is the sum of the term L1 and L2. This means that we need to add functions shown on this graph and on this graph. Let's do that. Here's how we do it. Here's our first function, that is L1, and here's the second function, L2. Let me zoom out such that you can see it better. So what's happening over here? If we add these two functions, we will finally obtain this function. What happened over here is that we took our L2 function and we simply shifted this function for this value. That is for the value of 20 logarithm with the base 10 of 20. And as the result, we obtain the final magnitude plot, or better to say log magnitude plot, of our function L. Here it is. The break frequency didn't change, we just shifted the graph. This graph shows the asymptotic approximation and the real magnitude plot. Finally, we need to sketch the phase plot. The phase is determined by this function. Phi of omega is minus arc 10 to omega. We know that arc 10 function is an increasing function of omega. This means that minus arc 10 is a decreasing function of omega. Then, when omega is equal to zero, we have phi is equal to zero. This means that when omega tends to zero, our graph will tend to zero. And it will be negative because of this sign over here. On the other hand, when omega goes to infinity, we see that phi goes to minus 90 degrees. On the other hand, when omega is equal to the break frequency, we have over here 2 multiplying 1 over 2, and that's 1. Arc 10 of 1 is 45 degrees, and that's precisely the point over here. And that's it. That's our phase plot. And finally, this graph shows the complete body plot of our transfer function. The top part, that is the first graph, is the log magnitude plot, and the bottom graph is the phase plot. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons and see you in the next video tutorial.